So today I'm going to start with the lecture week number four and five, talking about the International Food Law Harmonization, Codex Alimentarius, WTO, WTO World Trade Organization, SPL, the Sanitary and Photosanitary Agreement, the WHO, the FAO, what is ISO, what is HACCP, the third party audit program, and IGNOR. But basically today the lecture will be focused on the FAO, the WHO, as well as the Codex. So I will start by mentioning the learning objectives of the session. So basically in this session, we will learn about FAO, WHO, and Codex Alimentarius. So the FAO and the WHO, they do have a strong interest in promoting and boosting national food control system. But basically this food control system should be based on scientific evidences. And this uh, system will uh, promote uh, enhancing uh, the food control systems and will work on unifying standards. Uh, this will be uh, beneficial basically for the development You are currently the only person in this conference. So if we talk about uh, FAO, so what is FAO? So as you can see here, we have a series of uh, a, 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 a series of years. And what, uh, what should be pinpointed basically is that in 1962, the FAO and the WHO they have joined a, a, a venture agreement by establishing the Codex Alimentarius. The Codex Alimentarius, which is the Dustur Ghizai al Alami, a Codex Alimentarius means food law or food code. So, talking about the FAO assistance, so FAO is the Food Agriculture Organization. It will assist the systems in, uh, uh, in different activities. So, basically, they work on strengthening national food control system and infrastructure. They work as well on assist in preparation and establishing laws and regulation. They work on developing national strategies for food control and establishing and improving and boosting food analysis capabilities by sometimes securing funds to establish more laboratories. They assess the implication of SPS and TBT. SPS and TBT are two types of agreement aiming mainly to boost the international trade and they provide training and food inspection analysis handling they provide tot train uh, of train and training of trainers in hasip they provide training as well in food control system and they assist in strengthening the national codex committee so we see that in codex alimentarius we do have different committees working on different products or products or working on different activities later on we'll talk about this point so what about WHO? So WHO is uh, recent, uh, it's recently uh, 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 increasing its priority in food uh, safety at the international as well as at the regional levels. Uh, so different uh, uh, types of activities are being handled by the WHO. So basically they help and assist in the preparation of food legislation standards, code of hygienic practices, implementing food inspection programs, uh, promoting methods to prevent foodborne diseases, implementing in a better way HACCP system, as well as developing and enhancing food analysis capabilities, securing funds to promote more laboratories, uh, developing training on hygiene education programs, enhancing the safety of street food and street vendors, and establishing foodborne disease surveillance activity with the Ministry of Public Health in every single country. So in 1962, the FAO and the WHO have a joint adventure called Codex Alimentaris Program, uh, uh, presenting three main purposes. So the first purpose is to protect the health of the consumer. The second is to ensure international uh, trade in a fair way. So in fair international trade practices to boost the food trade and to promote also the coordination of standards from international governmental and non-governmental organization so this kind of harmony will assist in unifying the standards. And once the standards are being unified, this will enhance to this will enhance the international trade. So here you can see the FAO and the WHO. So together they joined a venture called Codex Alimentarius, presenting three main uh, 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 purposes: to protect the health of the consumer, to ensure fair trade practices, 
as well as establishing standards. So Codex Alimentaris is a Latin term meaning food law or food So now passing to the next slide, in this slide, I will talk more about the Codex Alimentarius. So in 1961, the FAO and 1963, the WHO, they passed a resolution to establish the Codex Alimentarius. It was basically developed in 1962, and it was a joint venture, as I already mentioned, to formulate international accepted food safety standards for the protection of human health and to ensure food trade practices. So the Codex Alimentarius is responsible for the joint FAO WHO food standard program. So what is the main purpose of CODEX? To protect consumer health and economic interests and to secure food and fair trade practices in the food industries. So what is the scope of the CODEX Alimentary? So basically the scope is to prepare standards for all the principal foods and they do have also standards uh, 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 including general provisions in respect of contaminants, food additives, food hygiene, inspection and certification, labeling and presentation, methods of analysis and something, the pesticide residues as well as veterinary drug residues. We can find as well among the Codex Alimentarius regulations, we can have uh, codes of practices, we can have guidelines to explain a certain standard and other recommended measures. So what are the basic objectives? As I mentioned before, health of the consumers, fair practices and trade, to coordinate all work regarding food standards. The codex should determine the priorities with respect to the standards. So to start the initiation by preparing which standards to publish the standards, they will impact quality and safety of the world food supply. They upgrade the standards for manufacturing, processing, safety, and quality. And what is really important and was really notable that since 1962, the international trade increased by 800%. So this drastic increase in the international trade was mainly due to fair trade practices uh, um, elaborated by uh, Codex Alimentaris as well as by unifying the international standards. So the Codex tried their best to contribute to lowering the trade practice and the protectionism. So I already talked to you about protectionism. It's when a country decides to protect its product so they do not uh, accept to import any product, but they export their products. So this is a protectionism for the local market. They cannot take a part of any international agreement because to ensure fair trade practices, they need to exchange their products. So uh, Codex Alimentaris, so it's a collection of food standards, of course, of practices and, and other recommendations. And it's a code for all processing companies, so it's a codex for any type of product, for any type of process it could be developed. So we do have guidelines that explain the best way to produce, the best way to package, to label, and to market the product. So what about that? What, what is a code of practice? A code of practice, it's an advisory tax to all members. So basically, it will assist members in achieving the purposes of the codex. So a code of practice will determine in, the, in, in a hygienic manner what is acceptable and what is not acceptable through a checklist. So it's like a checklist that will tell you what is acceptable from a sanitary point of view and what is not acceptable. However, concerning the guidelines and the recommendations, so the guidelines are basic tools that will help in elaborating more the standard. So we can have the standard, it's not really clear how to implement it. You can go back and look at the guidelines. They are very useful, especially for developing countries. So we do have, for example, a code of ethics for international trade with a guideline for how to implement this code of ethics. So with respect to control and sanctions, you should know that there is no organization that controls the codex. So Codex Alimentarius has no power on the countries. They cannot oblige the implementation of Codex. Codex, its role is only to uh, 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 enact uh, uh, standards, is to establish standards, is to establish guidelines, recommendations. So th there is no organization that controls Codex. So each country in the world has its own responsibility to, uh, 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 to 
it, it, to either or to, to fully accept a standard. For example, in Lebanon, sometimes Lebanon adopt a standard as it is from Codex and refer Codex, or to accept with minor deviations. So sometimes you can customize a Codex standard. For example, I can take the Codex standard of chicken and customize it to the Lebanese situation or free distribution. So I can uh, uh, also not adopt the Codex Alimentarius. However, uh, an increasing number of countries has been allowed with national food standards, particularly in the case of contaminants and residues. And we are uh, uh, we are uh, uh, actually uh, noting that uh, more and more the countries they are voluntarily implementing codex norms to boost and enhance their uh, trade level or the trade activity. So what about the structure and management of Codex? So basically, there is an executive committee. There is a regional coordinating committee. So we have committees for the different regions coordinating the activity of the region. And we have the secretary of the commission. So starting with the executive committee, there is one chairperson, three vice chairpersons, seven regional representatives, and six coordinators. So the coordinators. Oops. Okay, what about the regional committees? So we have basically six regional committees for Africa, Asia, Europe, Latin America, North America, and Southwest Pacific Near East. So they are responsible for defining the problems and the need of the region and definitely to prioritize the risks and the needs. It's better to address them at the regional level. So as we already mentioned before, regionalization is very important to prioritize the issues. And they are responsible as well in coordinating the activities. So what about the Secretary of Commission activity? They are responsible in formulating and developing the standards. They are an administrative support for the commission and uh, they are uh, the relation point with the National Codex contact point. So now talking mm -hmm. about the committees, we have committees on general issues, and you will see that we do have a product committees also. So on general issues, we have different committees. So when I say committee, that means that this committee, it will work on general principles. For example, another committee will work on food labeling. A third committee will work on how to improve methods of analysis and sampling. Fourth committee, food hygiene. Fifth, pesticide residues. Sixth committee, mainly on food additives and contaminants. So the seventh committee on all what is related to import, export, inspection, and certification systems. We'll be having also a committee for especially special dietary uses. And finally, for residues of veterinary drugs, such as antibiotic residues. So with respect to the product committees, we do have also a list of product committees. And here we do have groups for products with different committees handling the product. For example, we do have a Codex committee on cocoa products and chocolate, another one on sugar, a third one on processed food and vegetables, fourth one fats and oil, another one meat and poultry, fish and fishery, fresh foods and vegetables, milk and dairy products, natural mineral water, vegetable protein and cereal pulses and So what does it include basically a standard? So in any single standard, whether it's a codex standard or Lebanon standard, we'll start with, first of all, with the scope of the standard. I, I, I assume that you remember the structure of the standard that we already checked in class. Okay, I will upload some standards so you can, codex standard or Lebanon standard, so you can have a look on, on them. So we, we define the scope, then we pass to the description of the standard, then basic structure and quality factors, weighing and measures, labeling, contaminants, hygiene, food additives, and method for analysis. So structures and content of Codex Alimentaris, I can tell you that till now, Codex Alimentaris is composed of 14 volumes distributed in 17 books, and each book contains different standards and different guidelines on different uh, groups. So achievements, 137 food standards, 43 codes of practices, 33 guidelines, 197 pesticides evaluated together with limits with four residues and 1,300 food additives evaluated. So again, in uh, the structure and content of Codex Alimentaris, we have different volumes uh, in the books. And as you can see, every single volume is handling a specific part or specific product, as we mentioned before.
So volume 9, fish and fishery, volume 10, meat and meat products, volume 11, sugar products, 12, milk and milk products, method of analysis and acceptance. So Codex Alimentarius needs to ensure that the products are complying with Codex standard, and only these products can be bought and sold on the international market without compromising health or interest of consumers. So they need to ensure that the product is safe internationally and review of member laws based in, is an internationally accepted scientific and technological standard. So I will end up the lecture with the last slide. So this slide is basically talking about uh, 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 the enforcement of codex standard. So again, I can say that codex regulation not binding until adopted by a member. So it's not obligatory unless the member, so we have country members, unless they want to follow this uh, codex. So member ratification of codex standard is mandatory and violation, if there is any violation of the standard, the codex has no rule to punish. Uh, the member country will punish the uh, industry. So let's say uh, and if in Lebanon we are abiding by codex standard, if X industry will not implement the standard, the country will punish the responsible. Okay. So codex summary, it's designed to ensure international acceptance in terms of quality and economic interest of consumer. So the standard are basically scientific principles, science-based, they are flexible to be integrated in any national law. SPS agreement encourage acceptance of codex and codex reflect the international consensus on food law issues. Okay. Okay, so um, here, how to elaborate the standard. So as you can see, it all starts with the step one. So the Codex Commission decide to elaborate a certain Codex standard and automatically they will assign the work to the appropriate Codex Committee. So let's say I'm willing to uh, establish a standard about chocolate. So automatically the product uh, uh, committee will be the committee of chocolate, okay? And then, the step number two, so after assigning this task to the Codex Committee, on it, they will send it back to the Secretariat. The Secretariat also will send the comments to the concerned Codex Committee. So again, the standard, okay, they take a decision to work on chocolate standard, let's say. They will assign the work to the product committee, product committee of chocolate, okay? The secretary of the commission will prepare the draft. The draft will be sent to the mem uh, country members uh, of the codex, okay, commission. So they will come up with comments. The secretary will work on the comments and then they will set the comments to the chocolate product committee. Again, the secretary of committee will comply with the comments and we'll do another standard, okay? And the proposed draft standard will be submitted again to the commission of the executive committee to check it again. If there is any changes, they will send it back to the secretariat. Again, the draft standard will be sent to the member of commission for approval. So what is really important to know, you can read the steps in details, but it's really important to know that the secretariat of commission is uh, really uh, involved in uh, uh, writing down and developing the standards so they will take the, 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 the commands from the members of the Codex Committee uh, Commission and from the member of the uh, Product Committee to, uh, uh, to fix accordingly. Okay, so I will stop here the lecture and I'm going to tell you that for the coming slide, I will ask you kindly, starting from this slide, from the WTO agreements, to have a look on the slides, so to read the slides, to prepare them, and uh, we'll see you on Monday at 8.30 to continue this lecture. Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.